Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today on this Friday morning. It's a privilege and a pleasure to uh, share God's Word as we go through the thought for the day together in Haggai. We conclude this little book of the Bible, chapter 2, where the rebuilding of the temple occurs. And in verse 5, God reminded the people to not be to not be fearful. Do not fear. It has been said that in the Bible, do not be anxious, do not be afraid, is written some 365 times. And it's no coincidence that there's 365 days in a year. So it's kind of like a reminder for us pretty much every day that we are to cast out fear and anxiety on the Lord. Uh, recently, I went to uh, my neurologist. Um, I go once in a while. Uh, I have old concussions, he believes, from when I was younger, uh, from years of uh, probably, uh, he's assuming from uh, years of uh, martial arts that I was in. And for many years, I did karate. And a lot of times we would go in a ring and you, you get punched and you get kicked. And the, sometimes the effect, uh, you don't see it when you're younger, he said, but when you get older, you might exhibit some... Uh, side effects, the consequences. You know, it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, Remember the Lord your God in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come. And this, God's word is so true in so many ways. Uh, when you're young, you're strong and you're vibrant, even though you might uh, go through some traumas in life. But as you get older, you start to feel the effects of it. But my neurologist said something that the, the pandemic today in America is not so much COVID, but anxiety and fear. He said so many patients come to him dealing with anxiety, panic attacks, uh, worry, fear, and it, and it does take a toll on you physically, spiritually, and emotionally and mentally. And when I was thinking of this today, I was thinking of how in the Bible, people like David, David, as we read in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, was a man after God's own heart. He loved the Lord, but there were times when he was afraid, and in Psalm 34, he actually pretended that he was crazy in front of a man by the name of Abimelech, and he needed to be rem reminded in Psalm 34, verse 4, do not be fearful. God would protect him. God would take care of him. We're told in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Today, in the culture we live in today, it's been said that over 40 million Americans have acute anxiety uh, problems, certain uh, anxiety disorders, and there could be many things that could contribute to it. it. Could be physical traumas from when they were younger. It could be um, a chemical problem. It could be sin. Uh, you know, we don't know. Ultimately, only God knows. But the thing is, is that there is a serious problem in our culture with fear today. First John chapter 4, verse 18 reminds us that perfect love drives out all fear. And that perfect love is not um, melatonin or chamomile tea. And I don't, I, I take it at times at night to relax. But the perfect uh, uh, love that we have is not at the bottom of a bottle or at the end of a needle, or in the arms of a lover. It's in God through Jesus Christ. Christ alone gives us that perfect peace that we need. Oftentimes in my own life, I've tried to find peace in this life, even as a professing Christian, first and foremost, not going to God, which we should go to. Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. How many times in my life when I'm anxious or fearful or things are in my mind, stressed out about something, and we go to WebMD, or as I call it, Dr. Google. We go on Google and we start to search how to uh, deal with certain situations in our life before we go to God. My friends, I encourage you, first and foremost, go to the Lord with whatever it is that's bothering you. Go in prayer. Be still before God. Wait on the Lord. You often hear me say we live in what's called the microwave generation where everybody wants everything right away. We have no patience. But often in the Bible, we're told and many men and women in Scripture and many godly men in the past have learned to 
to wait on God, to be still before the Lord. I'm learning this in my own life, trying to just shut off the radio, shut off the TV when I have some quiet time. Just go for a walk and pray and meditate and just be still before God. My friends, we're learning and we've learned in Haggai about the rebuilding of the temple. Today, we are not so much concerned about a physical building as much as a spiritual building. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. We are told that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone now of the temple, the spiritual temple, and we're being built up in Christ. I encourage you, my friends, whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever it is you're struggling with, go to the Lord in prayer. John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5 reminds us that Jesus Christ is divine and we are the branches. And that apart from him, we can't do nothing. Sadly, and as I said before, maybe if we're very honest, if we look in the mirror in our own lives and evaluate ourselves, when we're fearful and worry about things, we forget to go to the Lord. In God is life. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 21 tells us that righteousness and mercy, when we seek these things, we will find life. And our righteousness is not in ourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 reminds us that Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Mercy is not something that is in us by nature. We're not merciful people in our flesh. We're self-sufficient. It's all about us. My life matters. Everything is about me, myself, and I. Mercy is found in God through Jesus Christ. When we want to see mercy, when I want to see mercy, I look at the cross. Not with my physical eyes. I look at the cross spiritually. Just to look at what really happened and transpired on Calvary 2,000 years ago. And you see the mercy of God. My friends, today, I hope today's devotional video will help us in this age of so much anxiety. I see a lot of prayer requests in the group I'm in on social media. A lot of people are dealing with anxiety attacks, panic attacks, heart palpitation, lack of sleep, um, physical illness. Uh, it affects relationships. I see the prayer requests. And my heart goes out to you. It really does. I see it uh, where I work in the school and young children are dealing with anxiety and stress and the effects it has on them. But my friends, I encourage you, go to Isaiah 9-6, the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus Christ, first and foremost in your life. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Lord, in an age of anxiety and fear, may we find peace with you through your son, Jesus Christ. Just this day is our daily bread. In his name we pray. God bless you all.